some stressful times are coming, very stressful and things we have to deal with. And we're asked all the time on this channel, could I make a video about how to deal with that stress? And indeed I can, because as a doctor, there are certain things physiologically speaking, I understand them better than most people. And so we're gonna use that as an informational video. And it's something that's gonna be so important to know because it's stuff we can literally physically prepare for so we're ready when that time comes. Long story short, people who don't prepare for this are going to have some serious problems when that day comes of crap in the fan. And more than anything, I'm gonna to explain to you why friends and family won't listen to you. They don't believe you when you tell you things are coming. And there's a very good reason for that and it's all connected together. So stick with us and let's jump right into it. First, all of us are living a normal everyday life right now. This is simply called your social engagement. Think of it as your normal day-to-day -day activities, just getting things done, running errands, etc. It's your day-to-day, -day, you're calm, you're very relaxed, and you know, complacent. Everything's going, well, just fine. Well, until somebody cuts you off in their car, then ah, but that's a whole different situation. This is where people live, by the way. The majority of people strive to stay in this area, and that makes sense, right? We wanna have a very calm, relaxing life. We have enough stresses as it is, like people cutting you off, and we wanna to try to stay calm and stay away from those agitators or even having like toxic relationships. You know, I wanna be mm, in just my calm place. It's so comfortable and complacent. Um, sit back and watch your favorite TV shows, uh, getting takeout from your favorite restaurant. We always wanna strive for, you know what? Easier life and relaxing life. And that's where unfortunately mankind gets trapped because we get kind of stuck in ruts and we get way too comfortable there, and now we're not getting any challenges. That's a whole different problem. But when we talk about problems and stress, let's look at what happens with your body physiologically. Your body, well, obviously is just relaxed, but even more so, it helps you digest your food. In fact, if you eat food, it forces you in this direction, and it helps you sleep. Especially if you try to go on a diet, you may have noticed this. Maybe at nighttime, I'm laying there, I cannot go to sleep. Sometimes having a snack, or this is where it comes from, having a warm glass of milk will help you go to sleep easier because it pushes you in that direction of relaxation. Your muscles are calm. Of course, when your mind is racing a minute, mile a minute, that, that makes it worse too, so try to relax your mind, and off to sleep you go. And you're healthy. You're a healthy person. Well, potentially anyway. And clearly, this is dependent on how you live your life, what you eat, do you smoke, this list goes on and on. Even though certain habits, like even smoking, nicotine literally makes you relax. It forces you to relax. And that's why in very stressful situations, like military people often smoke. Because by smoking the cigarette, the nicotine literally shifts you back in the direction, direction to make you uh, more relaxed. And it just makes things a lot less stressful when that happens. However, unfortunately, because people live in this area, not even just about smoking, but just in the area of relaxation, modern America has turned into a very sedentary lifestyle. People just sit all the time. Unfortunately, a lot of this comes from their job. Maybe they sit in a cubicle or at a desk all day, and then finally they come home and they just want to relax and, oh, I don't want to deal with anything, so they sit in front of a TV all night. And by sitting, 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 it literally relaxes you too much. But honestly, not getting the uh, exercise you need at least every single day or every couple of days is going to make the stressful times even more stressful. Exercise helps alleviate that, but there's more to it than that. Because during this time, your immune system is functioning properly or should be. Understand your immune system is fantastic. During this phase, it is meant to bring in cooties and fight off infection. For me and my family, again, trust me, I'm a doctor, we don't believe that you should make everything completely sterile and spick and span. The more cooties and everything you bring in, the more it builds your immune system, the more you're able to deal with the cooties coming in. And for example, a peanut allergy is a great example. Do you know what caused so many peanut allergies in the last 20 years? Yeah, obviously eating peanuts, but no, just the opposite. Because some kids were starting to get peanut allergies, the American Medical Association put out, you know what, doctors all across the country, maybe you should tell parents, don't eat any peanuts just to be on the safe side. And so what happened? Peanut allergies skyrocketed, skyrocketed. And they go, oh, whoops, that's the wrong intention. Because when you are introduced to peanuts at a younger age, it helps you be able to adapt to it. Your immune system builds up so it can adapt to it. And therefore, you can eat pe peanuts a much better chance later on in life. So basically, by keeping yourself away from cooties, you're asking for more troubles in the long run. Then, you know what, something happens. Maybe crap is hitting the fan. And we're sent into the next section called fight or flight. Often, it's something that causes your body to have a very rapid reaction. And there's all kinds of things that does this, by the way. Road rage, lightning strikes nearby, somebody threatens you or somebody's following you, somebody, bam, bam, 
bam, pounds on your front door. It'll make you jump out of your socks because you're like, oh my gosh, and you get into this mode of what's going on? And what causes this? The list is endless. There's so many things that give us that startle and say, "Uh oh, I need to deal with this situation that's coming. All of this leads to possibly anger or even rage, depending on what's causing it. Fear or panic will take over your body. And over a long period of time, anxiety sets in. Here's a little trivia fun fact for you. Fun fact of the day. What's the number one sign that you're living in a very anxious lifestyle where you have a lot of stresses like this? Anybody know? Your little eyelid up here twitches. You ever had that before? Oh, my eyelid's twitching and I don't know why. You keep blinking, it keeps twitching. It's stress and anxiety. That's the number one cause that causes that. And it's a very good indication. You didn't even know you're stressed out. And when it happens to me, I'll say, oh, I'm stressed out about something. What is it? And I'll say, it is. I'm worried about this. So having those little twitches and stresses obviously is a problem. And you need to find a way to calm your stress. Because unfortunately, even constantly watching the news and the fear channels will do this. This is why on our channel specifically, we always discuss how to prepare so you don't have to live in this level of reaction. And that's the point. We prepare so we don't live in fear. But don't bury your head and say, oh, you're a fear monger. I didn't make up the news, my friends. I just look at historically and st statistically what's coming. And I tell you, this is how you should prepare. If you don't want to prepare, why even watching the channel? It blows my mind how people do this. You want to simply just not watch videos. And I often talk about other channels, how they just put out fear all the time without any type of remedy and trying to fix it. And that is fear mongering. I mean, even they have a place, by the way, it tells you what's happening in the world. But you need to take on the role of, you know what, this is happening and maybe this is how I prepare for it so you can be ready with those things. But the point is, you need to get off your couch and stop being a potato and just watching these and being scared. So they come across Goshen prepping on their laptop. Instead of taking it and using that advice, they just sit down on their couch and relax. Get There we go. He's get, Oh, he's just going to get a book. Dude, you need to focus on what you need to do to prepare for this and be ready. And this is exactly why, by the way, friends and family don't listen because they get so comfortable in their life. Listen, everything in the world right now, especially in our modern country, is devoted to make you relaxed. You can do everything from your couch, and I'm not kidding. You can watch anything on TV, anything on the internet, go around the world anywhere, play video games and be mesmerized by all that kind of entertainment. You can literally have practically any kind of food delivered to your door, even have people come clean your house and walk your dog and watch your kids. And the list is endless. It's all set to make you relaxed and sedentary. And so you don't want to do anything but just kind of sit there all the time. And so when somebody comes across, they just put their laptop down instead of saying, you know what, maybe I need to take this to the next level and see what's happening. No, they don't want to. They keep their head buried in the sand because their head buried in the sand keeps it going with that incredibly relaxed life that's been delivered to them on a silver platter. So when you have fight or flight, among other things, you'll have an increased breathing, increased heart rate, everything's racing, getting you ready for what's coming. I mean, what is coming? I mean, the list is endless. So you need to prepare for this ahead of time, be ready for this, because when the crap does happen, you going into this state of fight or flight is not gonna catch you by surprise. But something else we need to look at, and this is important, you will have a decrease in non-vital organs. That's why if you've ever been in this situation, your skin gets kind of like cold and clammy because your body's cutting off the blood flow and putting it toward your major organs. You'll get what's called tunnel vision. It makes it so you focus right here. You can focus very clearly on just what's happening in the situation. It makes it easy to get flanked or by another person, a predator come from the side. Your digestive system will literally shut down. And so who has time to digest food? Let's devote the energy to your muscles and your brain getting ready to run. And then worse yet, and here's probably the worst part of it, your immune system becomes compromised. Yep, it starts shutting down your immune system. Same thing. We can deal with possible cooties later. Right now, let's shut it down and get it so we can get the heck out of there. Have you ever had this, had this happen before? You're driving down the road and maybe you got a flat tire. And it's like a cold, rainy, just awful, miserable day and you get stuck out changing the tire and you realize you drop half the lug nuts into the mud and you can't find them. And it's one of those days, if you ever had this, you're just so exhausted. You just want to cry. And you finally get home. You can barely get warm. You're so chilled to the bone, but you go sit in your, your chair and you're like, oh, what an awful day, awful day. And the next day you're sick. That's why, because you were pushed in that fight or flight for so long that literally your immune system was compromised. So I'm going to ask you something very quickly. What's it going to be like when you have to live every day with crap hitting the fan? Okay, again, if you haven't trained for situations, maybe you don't know how to respond to fight or flight. So instead, you end up freezing. With this, your reactions collapse and your body becomes immobilized. 
right here, the front of your brain, the prefrontal cortex is what takes all the different types of parts from your brain, all the information and decides right here, this is what I need to do to react to this situation. And that's why we practice. If you ever worked on something you're so good at that literally it comes your way and you don't even think twice and boom, the action just happens. Thank you for the hard wire just made in your prefrontal cortex. So I have so many people who prep on this channel, obviously, and they think prepping, unfortunately, is just stockpiling food and water and not preparing as far as physically doing stuff. So when things happen and they're sent to fight or flight, and especially in that fight or flight for the longest time, they eventually go up to the freeze portion, their brain will completely get miswired and they'll go through a hundred scenarios in their head trying to figure out what to do and they'll completely just freeze. They'll just kind of look like, oh my gosh, it's the deer in the headlights effect. You will freeze, your brain, you'll get very confused, your body actually will start turning numb and you will get that awful sense of helplessness. Have you ever been there before? Or even more, have you ever been just confused in a panic situation? Oh yeah, it's very easy to get confused in there. It's extremely common. That's what happens to mankind. And because of this, so many people will become a victim because they didn't prepare and they'll freeze and suddenly they are the next victim in the situation. Because what they'll do is instead of trying to react, like even just running to the exit, which is like you literally just 15 feet away, it happens sometimes. They'll freeze or they crouch down or they'll hide in the corner. And even though there's an escape right in front of them, they don't take it because their brain is not thinking properly. This happens. Physiologically speaking, their movements will shut down. They become numb because endorphins and encephalins are released in the brain and they hide the pain so you can react because you need to be, practically speaking, pain-free so you can react to these situations and not have to deal with pain but get the job done called survival. Uh, years ago, years and years ago, when I started martial arts, I was a really, uh, I was a lower belt and I was encouraged by my instructor to go to a tournament which I was not all about at all. And it was a sparring tournament and I hated sparring. I was so terrible at it. I just hated fighting overall. I was not very good at that kind of stuff. And so of course, when I went, I was at this very fight or flight level and hoping not to get into the freeze level. But nevertheless, I definitely had those different neurotransmitters surging through my brain to kill the pain and such. So I come across this guy and my opponent is massive. My first guy, huge guy. And it was like, yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to kick him in the head. Because that's what the objective is, by the way, is try to kick people in the head. It wasn't going to happen. So I did what I had to, and I kicked him in the chest. But being a lower belt, I didn't have my foot positioned properly. And so when I kicked, it took my toe and bent it backwards and broke my foot. I, held, I heard it pop and felt it. And I was thinking, oh, I must have just popped my toe. And I continued sparring. In fact, I ended up winning the tournament. I remember the next opponent, I remember it with that same broken foot, didn't know it was broken, I was kicking him in the head and won. And it's amazing because, whoa, man, once it was done and I sat down and after another half hour, hour passed, my foot started to swell up and the, uh, the endorphins and such are now decreasing my brain and boy, did that pain start kicking in. And that's what happens, by the way, you may be in that situation too. During the actual event, you don't even know you're in pain or don't you know you have problems. There's times where people even get shot or stabbed, et cetera. And until things are worn off, they're like, oh, look at that, I have a hole in my body. You know, and they don't realize they've actually been, been shot or stabbed before. So all those things are really there for you. But when you talk about over a long period of time, it's really not good because you want to be hyper aware of your situation, but that's what happens when you get to this freeze complex. And again, non-vital organs will continue to shut down too, including again, your immune system, not good. So now let's take a look at this with a very real point of view. Uh-oh, crap has just hit the fan. And there's fires everywhere. Maybe the grid's down, food has become unlimited, there's marauders, we have to deal with all these situations. It is constantly going to push you into this fight or flight situation or possibly even to the freeze level. And you will have to deal with all that symptomology that goes with it, including that decreased immune system and decreased body responses. Please take this to heart, that that may be the situation that kills you, not the marauders, not the fires, not the crap hitting the fan, et cetera, but you because you're in those situations because you didn't prepare. Granted, you had a whole bunch of corned beef hash and water stored up, but you never prepared for these very stressful situations. Do you know how many people died? 28 million people died in World War II. 28 million people. Oh, wait. That's how many people died simply just from hunger and disease. 28 million. Hunger and disease. Not talking about the combat and the fighting. No, 28 million just from hunger and disease. And a lot of these disease states were people constantly living in these situ the, the levels of fight or flight or freezing and they were not able to deal with it. So what's World War III going to look like? What are you going to look like in this situation? Are you ready for this? Are you preparing? Because again, it's not simply just about stockpiling food and water. Sure, stockpile food and water. But it's about preparing physically. It's about preparing 
mentally. It's about preparing physiologically. And it's about preparing for all these stressful situations that will be coming and not cowering down and staying down the lower level because your everyday life is going bye-bye when this happens. That's the number one thing that people need to see. Of course, they don't want to break out the comfort zone. So if anything, show them this video and help them understand what's coming because we don't do this by simply just making stuff up. We look at it by history that, you know what, crap, at the fan, crap hitting the fan is coming and it is something we indeed have to deal with.